Hi everyone! Happy Wednesday! Thanks for joining me here for another craft night with friends. All right, we are continuing on the Little Fox embroidery pattern tonight. We'll be working on this for the rest of the week. So thanks again for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. So, all right, let's get going on the little fox tonight. All right, hello, hello, everyone. Zoom you on down. Okay, so tonight we are continuing on the fox embroidery kit. So this is our embroidery of the month this month. And uh, uh, we got the whole fox done last night, and uh, tonight we are starting on uh, this kind of little squiggle squirrel uh, pattern in the back here. So here's the instructions again. I'm going to be having this nearby so I can take a look at that. And uh, let's just get going. I think I have some of this fawn color all ready to go, and let's just get at it. I want to get as far as I can again today. All right, so I've already split the six strands into three, and uh, I'm just stitching with three strands here. So I did post, uh, right before coming on here, I posted a video um, of the little fox. So we, we got this little fox visitor um, hanging out in our garden. Actually, I actually think the video kind of got a little bit messed up, so I'll have to do another longer video of the fox so you guys can see. Um, but yeah, so I, I put a link, it'll be the latest post over on TikTok if you wanted to see this guy hanging out in our garden. All right, so I'm just weaving in the end to get going. I'm going to make this thread a bit shorter. Okay, so I'm going to come up where I left off. I'm going to come up right in the middle of that loop again. So we made that that uh, chain stitch. I'm going to come up right in the middle there. Okay, and let's do the sewing method. So I'm going to push the fabric down a bit again to make it a little more loose in the hoop. And that'll help me do the sewing method where I can go in and out in the same motion a little bit easier. So, all right, let's just get going with this chain stitch. We are gonna just chain stitch all over this piece tonight. There we go. So I'm just I'm just going over that last loop. I think that's gonna be cute. All right, let me get rid of my watch here for a sec. So let me know how your Wednesday was. In my brain, it's Thursday already, but. It's just Wednesday. So I'm going in and out in the same motion and then ending up within like the loop that my fabric makes. And we are just gonna hang out here. I'm gonna try and go as fast as I can today because I would love to be able to finish this this week yet and we have a whole pile of lavender to stitch and that's going to take some time you guys it is just hot and muggy here again I don't know about about you but it's been record warm here this summer Maybe that's why the fox came and hung out in our in our garden here. The neighbor said that he's building a uh, a den in their yard, so that's cool. So hopefully he sticks around. It'll it'll be nice to see him in winter and stuff too. We saw a couple, a pair of them last winter, so it'd be nice to have them stick around. They're so sweet. Let's see if I can, um, the sewing method I can really only do from like right to left. 
I'm gonna try going in different directions tonight, just see if I can practice going in different directions. I like the idea of keeping the design straight and seeing if I can uh, keep it like that as I stitch, but I don't know. Really, it's a little bit more comfortable. I think actually going away from me seems easy. So I'm trying to practice this way of embroidery where I go in and out in the same motion versus pulling the thread all the way to the back and all the way to the front. It's not the way I learned, so it feels a little awkward to me always. So I'm just trying to test out different ways of doing it. See what works best. Oh, no bear sightings today, Amy. That's good. <laughs> uh, always probably a good day when there's no bear sightings like on your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Alright, here's my last stitch on this side of the head. So I'm gonna anchor that down with a tiny little stitch on the other side of that loop. Alright, there we are. Got that squiggle going on that side. I do have a little bit of floss left. Um, you know what? I think I am gonna just jump across the head. Usually I, I don't. I don't like having a big jump on the on the back of the embroidery. Like I don't like jumping from here to there, but I've already done that with the eyes, so who cares? And it's a pretty light color, so jumping from there to there, and I'm just gonna get started on the next spot. I have plenty of thread left for a few more stitches at least. Like to oop, jeez. Oh always do that. I, uh, the needle fell off of the thread. I'm going to just snip a nice clean end again. Get that back on. All right. Oh my gosh, Colette, you said you had 102 degrees in Oregon Ugh, at the end of the week. Oh, and then 68 degrees today. Yep. That, is, that sounds a whole lot like how it is here. Um, I guess we're getting into fall, so it's that time of year when it's just anything could happen, <laughs> you know? 100 degrees one day and like snowing by the end of the week, right? Ugh, hope not. But yeah, we were at the warehouse today, and we have had sketchy air there. So the air condition was not working again there for the whole warehouse. And oh my god, we were moving stuff around and just melting in there today. Ugh. I came home and took a shower right away and felt a zillion times better. But yeah, we're moving all the stuff from our warehouse, so we'll be doing that uh, this the rest of the week and weekend here. My parents are coming to help out, and uh, I hope the air kicks in again. Oh, that building. Never know. The air, the air and the heating are always little question marks. Then you let them know, and you hear them on the roof, and then it turns on again. But all the time it goes off. All right, I think I'm out of floss here. I know I just have this tiny bit left, but I, I definitely don't have enough for that. So I think I'm just going to end it here. Let's put our little anchor stitch in, and uh, we'll weave in the end. And then we'll just start up our next, next piece. Ooh, I have to cut another piece. This is our other cut piece. Uh, they're, Christine, they're, um, they're chain stitches, so, um, yep, it's a row of chain stitches. So daisy chains, I suppose they could be called that. So, uh, a chain stitch, a single chain stitch, like if you just did one of these and then put a little anchor stitch in, that would be the start of a lazy daisy flower. Um, so my guess is we're talking about the same thing and... It might just sometimes be called a daisy chain, but but yes, it's it's um, a chain stitch. But 
sort of the building block for a lazy daisy stitch. So yes, I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> All right, um, more floss. Let's get about 24 more inches here. We'll pull our three strands. Oops, I almost got two there. Okay, one. Oh, didn't get all the way. There. One, two, three. ready to go again let's grab a needle oh yeah we could try the thread conditioner um let me grab some Ooh, actually you guys my brother sent me <laughs> check this out so he sent me a whole pile of samples that he made so he is trying um he's he's uh starting a candle company and he's like oh those thread conditioners are a lot like candles so he made let me smell it Ooh, this one's really good this one's kind of like an evergreen one he sent me three different scents of um basically thread conditioner to to play around with so let's give this a try he got like these cute little containers for him this is kind of like the the normal container i think for thread conditioner so you just run your floss through there it's basically a wax uh we'll give this a try i haven't i haven't tested these out yet oh dang they smell delicious though Ooh, yum it's a really uh, strong scent this would just be good to have open and sitting around um this one definitely is kind of like an evergreen but with like a warmth and a sweetness to it i guess all right Let's give it a go. But yeah, so I've basically coated my thread with um, with with that wax, and uh, um, that should kind of strengthen it a little bit. It should help it not twist up on itself as much. And frankly, it just smells yummy. And there's like you know the some oils in there to help condition the thread too. Uh, let's give it a go. weave in the end here again just to get started uh jane and molly i'm using a size five embroidery needle uh, we sell them in the shop ours we get ours with like an extra big eye on them uh to fit the fit the floss through it but like a normal size five embroidery needle the the size five refers to how fat the needle is uh, but really what you're looking for is something with a large eye so the, the thread can go through and a sharp point. So there's also like cross stitch needles or sometimes they're called like tapestry needles. Those are blunt, so they have a blunted point, um, which makes it a lot harder to go through fabric like this for embroidery. Uh, embroidery needles have that sharp point so it can stab right through fabric like this. All right, there we are. I'm coming right back up in the middle of that loop. So that little anchor stitch, you won't even be able to see that. So I, I always, I'm always kind of using this, this some um, embroidery needle, the size five embroidery needle. I think, um, so it works with, you know, six stitches as well. The only time I'd maybe use a different, like a thinner needle is if I was doing like a ton of thread painting with like a single strand of floss, then I'd maybe consider doing, like if, if I was like using a fine fabric, a tightly woven fine fabric, I would um, maybe consider using a thinner needle. And I probably wouldn't need a, as big of an eye either because one strand would probably be pretty easy to thread. But I don't know. I, I like sticking to these needles. I think they work just fine. All right, there, we finished that squiggly squiggle. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pop up on this side and finish this up. I don't think we'll have enough 
uh, with one strand of thread. Uh, but we got that second strand from this, this round. That should work. So I like this going upward, this upward motion for the sewing method. I think I'm going to kind of keep doing that. Then I can kind of make that loop and come up in the loop. It is easier to loosen the fabric a little bit when you're doing that sewing method, so let's just push it down. You just have to be careful that you're not pulling super tight because you don't want you don't want like your fabric to get all buckled, I guess. That is not the sewing term, buckled. <laughs> what am I thinking of? Uh, um, like bunched up? What is that? I can't even remember. Pucker, there. We don't want to get them, like, don't want it, the the fabric to, to pucker. <laughs> I still don't think I have that right. Man, you can tell it's late. The vocabulary is the first thing to go. Nope, math is the first thing to go. Then vocabulary. <laughs> Math goes away around 6 p.m. <laughs> Language has another couple hours on math. Ooh, yes, Raspberry. So Kimberly says, hi, friends. Back to see the progress on Raspberry. Yep, we, <laughs> we sort of named the little fox uh, Raspberry last night just because I think it's cute. And uh, uh, when we saw him last... He uh, was went into it. He jumped out the fence of our garden and then went and laid underneath the raspberry bush and and slept there for a little bit. So, and I think that's a cute name for a fox, right? Raspberry. I like it. I know he's not. Well, he's a red fox, so raspberries are red. I know you know foxes are more of an orange, not raspberry red, but still doesn't have to be based on color, I suppose. I just like that he slept under the raspberries. All right, we're already almost running out of thread. It doesn't look like it, but the chain stitch uses up so much floss. If you're wondering, I, I'm using the word thread and floss interchangeably. Um, I guess I should be saying like embroidery floss, but I just always end up saying thread here and there. So whenever I say either word, I'm, I'm talking about the exact same thing. I'm not, I'm not like using them as two different vocab words. So I am stitching in this upright position, um, which means I'm rotating for the need of the stitch. And this is such a like a loopy shape that I'm rotating a lot. Uh, once we get done with this little squiggle, I'll probably stay more upright. Ooh, lavender thread conditioner. Ooh, I should have lavender thread conditioner. You're right. I think. Um, he sent me three different scents. Let me, when I'm done with this floss, let me see what the other ones are. All right, I think I'm gonna do the stabbing method for the rest of this, just to try and get it in. Nah, let's, I think I can still do the sewing method here. I thought the sewing method would be feel weird here, but it's, it seems like it's gonna be good still. Definitely gonna take a whole nother piece of floss. This did not get us very far, did it? Some stitches use barely any floss and others just eat it up. Uh, Kimberly, I'm not carrying thread conditioner yet. The That original thread conditioner I got from wisecrafthandmade.com. Um, but my brother is uh, making some and so I'm kind of at the testing stage. So, um, he sent a bunch to me a little while ago, and I this is the first day that, that I tested it out. So I'll 
I'll try another scent. But it's nice and creamy, so it's a little creamier than the ones that I got from um, Wisecraft Handmade. I think we'll get one more stitch out of here. So that's kind of interesting. I, I'm, I, um, I'm curious to see, you know, see how if it affects the fabric at all or or whatever. But so far, it's it's working great. It smells awesome. That's my big thing. I mean, the real thing with red conditioner is you want to protect the the thread uh, from all the friction from going through the fabric, and um, that that should help it from twisting up on itself. I mean, it didn't didn't twist up on itself at all this last time, but that's not really an indicator because sometimes the thread just doesn't. I mean, sometimes it just twists more than other times. But so far it's working nice. Ugh, it does really smell good though. All right, let's uh, first, oh, I do have another thread already. I thought I had to cut some more, but nope, I have it right here. So, all right, let's, let's, uh, he marked the bottom. So this one's a two dot. I don't know what the flavors are. <laughs> okay, this is a no dot, so we'll smell that. And here's a one dot. Um, <laughs> all right. Ooh, okay, so this is, um, this is, I would, I would call this like a, not like, like a, it's like a cookie flavor, so not, not necessarily like a sugar cookie, like in between a sugar cookie and like a ginger snap, maybe. Mmm, yeah, this is a little, um, um, kind of, um, uh, Halloween-y, <laughs> or pump, or harvesty like uh, fallish there we go mm, yeah that's good that has a little bit of a spice like a, a a baking cookies sort of smell okay and then let's see what this one smells like Ooh, okay i ha i need a smelling vocabulary someone needs to send me like a list of smelling smelling words so this smells um almost like yummy laundry <laughs> but but not like laundry like it's a little um sweeter it still smells outdoorsy but not like pine it's more like warm um and sweet i'm gonna have to think on that one this one is a little bit more floral but still like with some body like warm and and sweet but just a little bit of floral. Ugh, I'm gonna have to ask. Oh, maybe this, like, yeah, like a cotton linen-y with it, but still, like, just warm a little bit. Ooh, sunkissed linen. Ooh, Kimberly. Oh, I'm liking that. Yep, so, yeah, I'm gonna call it sunkissed uh, linen. That's that's what this one's smelling like. Oh, Amy, like, uh, the snickerdoodle for this one. That's, that's a good, that's a good, um, way of saying this. Yep, let's call that one like a cinnamon snickerdoodle yeah but yeah sun-kissed linen that's what i'm gonna call this one i, I like the um the oh god yum evergreen everything i love that okay i'm gonna use this one the um the sun-kissed linen i'm gonna have to ask him like what the real scent is i just i don't always trust my nose <laughs> for like smelling what the actual intention was but I, I like this one this one's this one's nice these are all really strongly scented um, which is kind of fun. Like, it's just fun to open. All right. Testing this one out now. Um, needle. Fun, though. I'm excited. Ooh, pumpkin pie latte. That's, yeah, it does. Okay, let me smell that one again. I gotta see if that's, oop, wrong one. Pumpkin pie latte. So it's not that sweet. I think snickerdoodle is probably closer, like a little hint of sweetness, but not 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 like brain frying sweetness, which to me is like pumpkin pie latte. <laughs> All right, let's give this a go. But yeah, pumpkin pie latte. That's that's a good good name. All right, let's weave in the end. 
man, you got that naming thing down. Some people are just good at naming or very talented at naming. Those are good, good names. That is something I struggle with for sure. I like that. Sunkissed linen, pumpkin pie latte. Um, I think he used beeswax. I gotta, I have to talk to him about that. I'll, I, I didn't even, they just like came in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta talk to him about him. I know he does soy candles, but um, so I don't know if this is just like soy, but I'm thinking it's probably some beeswax. So I'm gonna find out. And again, I'm just testing them. These aren't in the shop or anything yet. We'll probably do some more tests. Oh, your former English teacher. Oh, nice. <laughs> Ooh, this one smells good right off the bat too. Oops, got a puzzle stuck in there. Let's get that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't talked to him since I've gotten those, so I'll have, to, I'll have to, to check it out. Does he have a business, too? Does he sell his candles? So they're just starting out. Um, they have an Instagram now. I think they just, they just um, him and his girlfriend just started it. Uh, they're selling candles right now to wineries and they're making candles like right in the actual wineries bottles. So like they're recycling the wineries bottles and then, um, then they're, uh, selling it at, at the winery in the winery gift shop. So they're doing that. Uh, they just got their first few orders from that. Like they're just starting, but they are going to have a line of, um, just, actual candles they're not all going to be in like bottles um so it's called c to snow so s-e-a and then the number oh no i think it's, they're doing like t-o and then uh snow but s-n-o so c to snow so I, i'm guessing that's their instagram i'll have to check again But yeah, he's, so he's the one that, um, that brother is the one that grooms ski hills. So he's, he's the snow half of sea to snow <laughs> and his girlfriend, um, just grew up in Seattle. So she's got the sea half of it and he's got the snow half. Um, but yeah, so he, he, he's the, like drives the giant cats on, uh, snow hills. He, uh, designs, um terrain parks so all the jumps all that like he he welds all the jumps and then places them and then grooms the hills and carves them all up and so that's that's his his deal and him they're starting a candle company which is great they have a, such a good story for it just like like all their photography photography is gonna be great and uh i'm excited for them But yeah, see you snow. I will, um, I'll have to, uh, see if they've posted any more to their Instagram. Just got their logo done, working it out. But yeah, I would love, um, I mean, so far I, I'm liking these. I'll have to dig into it more though. I'll, I'll talk to them, um. So we can discuss ingredients and scents and all that, but it'd be fun. I'd love to carry some of these in the shop. They're very yummy smelling so far. Almost done. Okay, I'm gonna have enough floss for, for this, which is great. That would have been a bummer to have to cut a whole new piece of floss. Hello, thanks for joining. All right, I think two more stitches after this one. Oops, come on here. I'm gonna have to do some more research on thread conditioners and stuff too, but it's fun to test for sure. So the next one, uh, I'll try that, uh, <laughs> the snickerdoodle scent. I don't, I don't know what they're calling it or if that's even, you know, the sense that, I mean, they can call it whatever they want, depending, you know, regardless of what 
sense they use, but uh, it's fun calling it Snickerdoodle. <laughs> so we'll, well, we'll use that one next. All right, let's... I do know how to crochet. Um, that is one of my go-to ultimate, like, chill out crafts <laughs> crochet and I, that's one of the reasons why I like this chain stitch that we're doing now is because it's super similar looking at least to to crochet a crochet chain stitch but yeah I love crocheting I actually <laughs> like crocheting like super duper old school oh I caught the thread here um old school doilies because my grandma used to crochet those and uh, I just I love using that tiny thread and I, I use her actual tiny needle that she used to have or hook and it's so relaxing I don't especially like the look of doilies in my house but I do love making them <laughs> I have kind of like a bin of doilies I kind of want to frame some do I tat so I have <laughs> you guys, I have it actually near me. So here is my singular only thing I've tatted from my first tatting kit. I was trying to figure it out just from the, the instructions in the, this um, in this uh, book, but oh god, I could not at like it took me like a whole day to kind of figure it out but there this is this is the extent of everything I have ever tatted is right here <laughs> but it's cool like I have to learn how to do it again there's like some weird you have to slip and slide the the shuttle in weird ways that I <laughs> am not used to <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun words together <laughs> um but yeah, so that is the extent of my tatting. I would like to try it up again. Um, I do want to frame them. So I actually, Kimberly, I have framed the doily. So I do have um, a doily that my grandma made. Oh, let's decide where to go next quick. I'm, um, then we'll chat. So I think I'm going to do... I'm going to do the green next. So here I'm looking at the the design again so all of these single chain stitches and some back stitches um, up to um, the little lavender bit so let, let's do that I'll just kind of wash over do all the green on here but yeah so my grandma you know made tons of doilies with that like cotton thread and I and I when she passed away I got her the rest of her cotton thread her crochet thread and um some of her crochet needles and uh so sh i have one of her doilies as well so i want and I've, I've made one of i've made a doily since with her her threads but i mixed up the colors a little bit more than she probably would have <laughs> so i want to frame like her actual one and mine next to each other in like shadow boxes um, so that's been on my list of wanting to do for probably, oh God, probably at least five years. I tied a little knot in here. Oh man, I tied an actual knot in here. Boo. All right. I'm going to try and pick that out. Um, but yeah, so I, I'd like to do that, but I don't know how to make a nice shadow box, which I'd like to do. And I'm not quite sure how to mount them in there either because I don't want them like flat against a backboard I'd love to have them kind of floating a little bit I'm just making a mess here aren't I there we go it's still kind of twisted up within each other here Ugh. we're making a little nightmare here oh there I think I might have forced it forced it into submission here Ugh, or maybe not let's see let's see if I can get another piece out of here if not I'll have to cut it off at that part I just tied a little knot in there somehow oh I got one out yay okay excellent problem solved but yeah so those two things I want to be able to make a really nice frame that's you know wide so I can have that that little thickness to it 
two, and I want them different sizes because mine is just a hair bigger. So I want I want um, her. Or I want the frames a bit of a different size. Oh, Ashley, so this is a kit from our website. It's penguinandfish.com. There's a link in the um, in my bio there um, to the website. It's our it's our embroidery of the month this month. So there'll be a link right at the top. But yeah, it's a it's from our kit. So that's what it'll look like when it's done. This is the front of our it comes in a like a cute little box here, so um, with all the supplies, all the floss, the fabric pre-printed, a hoop, needle, everything you need to get going, a bunch of instructions. All right, this is the, what we're calling snickerdoodle uh, right now. Again, these are my brother, my brother's starting a candle company. Oh, thanks, Ashley. Uh, starting a candle company and, um, I cut this really long. So this is like way more than 24 inches. I don't know why I cut it this long. Oh, well, we'll deal with it. Uh, but he uh, saw me using some thread conditioner and he's like, oh, well, that's kind of what we're doing here. So he made me some thread conditioner and they came in the mail and I'm just kind of testing them out. Uh, he sent me a bunch, um, just three different flavors and a bunch of them. But yeah, so they're pretty yummy. So this is the, <laughs> we're making up names for for the scents. <laughs> they don't have any names right now. We could, this is, this one's the snickerdoodle so far. It's it's a little, it's like a warm cookie, like cinnamon, pumpkin-y, nutmeg -y sort of cookie smell to it. Uh, kind of nice. Playing around with, so the thread conditioner. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's basically wa wax, um, Melanie. I have to talk to my brother about it, but so it's wax and some scents and it basically coats your, coats your thread, uh, to make it stronger. Uh, it helps reduce the friction, um, the wear and tear of it going through the fabric, which also helps it let, um, not twist up on itself as much. So it does, uh, prevent knots, which is great because those suck. Um, okay, so I'm going to have this nearby me again so I can look at where all the green leaves are because some of these leaves are actually little lavender bits, so I don't want to get those green. I think I'm going to weave in... Actually, why don't I weave in here? We'll go from this way to that way, maybe. So these are single... These are going to be single chain stitches. So someone asked... I forget who, um, last night, like how to do single chain stitches. Cause we were doing that big chain stitched line and, uh, um, they asked about single, uh, chain stitches. So we're going to do one of those right now. Hey, Kathy. Thanks for joining. Ooh, Amy stitching skeletons, making Halloween pillows. I know it's Halloween stitching time already. Isn't that nuts? All right. Just getting situated here. All right. So a single or detached chain stitch it means the same thing. These are also the building blocks for a lazy daisy stitch. Those are like those cute little flowers uh, that go around in a circle. Um, and it's also very similar to the chain stitch we just did here. So we're going to come up at the point and you can make them different sizes. Like here is, here's some little itty bitty baby ones and here's some bigger ones. This is a little bit of a bigger one. Oh goodness. I think I got myself tangled already. Oh, that's why I caught a fuzzle. Oh man. Part of the, there we go. It's not even tangled. The edge of the, I think I caught the edge of the fabric and grabbed a thread and that thread wrapped itself around. Okay, we're fine though. All right, so I'm coming up at the bottom and I like making kind of a circular shape, kind of the same shape as the, the arc there. So we have like this little arc that meets again at the same point. I'm gonna go back in that exact same point and I'm not gonna pull all the way through, just a little. 
And then I'm going to come up at the top of that arc, like the apex of that arc. But I'm also coming um, within this circle that we made earlier. So then I'm going to pull through. And because I'm coming up in that circle, I'm going to catch it with my, my thread. And there we go. And I'm going to leave it loose. Like, I'm not pulling tight. So, you know, you think when you sew, you're just pulling everything tight. Um, this, I'm actually leaving it a little bit loose. And that's what's giving me that little arc, that pretty arc shape, um, that teardrop shape. So, all right. And uh, so that's part one. Part two is we are going to make a tiny, tiny, tiny little stitch just on the other side of the loop. Um, and uh, not in the same hole, but just on the other side. And that's what's going to hold that loop in, in place. So it's a tiny little stitch. So right there, itty bitty stitch holding down that loop. And that is our single or detached chain stitch. And we're going to make a whole pile more of them. So we're going to just jump around and make them. So let's, let's do another one just the same way. So I'm kind of making that loop around then going back in the same hole, pulling a little bit, and then coming up at the top of that arc in that loop, and then pulling through, catching that loop. And I'm not pulling too tight. Getting it nice and uh, holding it in place there. Oh, thanks, Melanie. And then tacking it down just on the other side. Oh, man, you guys. I'm in not central now. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. That was just fine. I just looked away and it got squiggly. All right. Let's do it again. All right. So this time I'm going to use the sewing method and that's where I go in and out in the same motion. So I'm basically doing the same thing. I made that arc and now I'm going back in the same hole, but I'm going to come up at the top at the same time. Um, and then I'm actually going to kind of tuck my thread behind the needle and then I can pull through. So that's another way to, to do this. Um, that's kind of easy. I like doing it that way. And we still have to tack it down. All right, a few more. So there's the in and out way. And I'm kind of coming up in that loop already. So that's good. It's a nice looking one. All right, I think, why don't I just jump around and do these bottom ones and then these other ones, I also have to do the, um, the stems of these lavenders. So we'll, we'll do that at the same time, but I think I'm gonna just jump and do all these bottom ones first since we're kind of on a roll. Oh, I'm stitching kitchen towels, the backs. Oh, I just not as pretty and they show their Oh, they're better since you're doing the weaving method. Oh, that's good, but still not as nice on the back. Yeah, I, it's probably never going to be as nice on the back as the front for sure. Um, but yeah, the, the weaving method, if you can, if you can do the weaving method and uh, um, do the least amount of jumps around as you can, that'll be, that'll help. But yeah, it'll never be quite the same unless you do... There are some stitches that you can do that will give you the same effect as the on the front as the back, but you're pretty limited then in the stitches that you can you can do. Uh, one of those stitches, it's basically like a running stitch, but you do the running stitch across the whole thing first, and then you come back and do another running stitch over the same line but you fill in the gaps if that makes sense um that's a stitch that'll look the same on the front and the back but you can't um i don't know there aren't many stitches that look the same on the front and back 
Oh, you love the needle threader. Oh, that's nice. Um, let me see if I have one of those here. Oh, yeah. So Gretchen's saying she loves our needle threaders. So aren't they so sweet? They have um, that cute little flower on them. And they do have a little cutter, which is awesome for for travel as well. So I'll um, with my next um, thread, I'll, I'll show you guys how to use that if you haven't seen a needle threader before. Um, I've been using just like that pinch method, but um, that can be tough sometimes. So the needle, the needle threader is is nice. Oh, Shirley, that's so sweet. Um, tell him thank you for me. Thank you for the rose. That's nice. Good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you like the needle threader, though. That was a fun thing to play around with. We ordered some more, so we're we're running out of a bunch of colors. Um, we do have a few colors left, but we ordered more. But they probably won't be here for like another month or so. Oh, use the pinch, but at the end of the day, your eyes are tired, so the the needle threader is great. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad that option works for you. All right, so now I'm doing the back stitch again. That's that's what I used um, for the for the rest of um, for the fox. That's the back stitch, and I only have to go up to the beginning of these. Um, what will be the purple flowers later? The lavender. All right, and uh, I will come back and do that lav or that um, the the purple color later so let's just jump over to these other leaves so this is um this is very similar now to what a lazy daisy stitch would be i have two leaves here that both end up at the center so if we kept going around we would have like a bunch of um leaves that just keep going around so those are basically like petals so that would be a lazy daisy stitch so this is almost like the start of a lazy daisy stitch or it's you know that's a lazy daisy stitch just two of them so it's it's all it is is a two single chain stitches. So there's there's the one. Let's tack it down. And then we just come back up through that same hole that those other ones came through and uh, do the other one. And that's it. That's basically all there is to a lazy daisy stitch. It's no different than a single chain stitch other than that you have several of them. Several of them that go around a center point. Okay, jump down and do this one. All right, and I think now let's back stitch up the stem. And there's something we have to look for. Um, I have to find out uh, from the instructions if the stem, this particular stem goes in front of or behind the, um, the little squiggle because some of these go behind and some go in front. So that's, I'm gonna have to look back at the instructions when I get, get up that high. We are cruising through this, though. It's only Wednesday. I, I'm feeling good about our, our timing on this. Usually these take me the entire week to do, and it's not often that we go over. But I, but I was thinking, man, we're going to have to add like two more days to this, but I think we will still probably finish by, um, by Friday. So I, I'm, I've been working on it since Monday, so just an hour, an hour a day in the evening here. And um, it's just fun to hang out with you guys. All right, let's see. All right, so this one goes above the squiggle and then later this one goes above the first part and then underneath the second part. So we just have to keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. I think I'll need a new piece of floss for that. So, all right, we'll go over the top of this one. There we are. So it looks like it's in front of um, that swirl, those chain stitches. 
Ooh, and we are getting low on the floss here. I think I'll have enough to do this next uh, leaf. I'll just hop over here, do this leaf. But we don't have much left. We might have enough for the rest of the stem though, I, I hope so. Okay, tack that down. And let's try and get, let's see if we can get this entire stem done because it'd be a bummer to come back and do like one stitch on on the stem. Oh, plenty. We'll do two more here. Do I have a rule of thumb about how far we should jump? to another section of stitching. I mean, some people jump the entire length, like from here to there, and that's totally fine. Um, one, you know, I, there's a couple things I think of. One is, is jumping gonna use more or less thread than me just like weaving in to the backs of the stitches here and starting fresh? Like, is that gonna be um, more thread to do that jump? And if that's the case, I'll, I'll weave in for sure. Um, sometimes I just get lazy with weaving it in, like what I'm doing now, so I'll just jump and be like, who cares? My other stitches will cover it up, which is totally fine as well. Uh, if I want like a super clean back, I will try and like hardly jump at all, and I'll try and um, stay within the lines that I've already done. Uh, that's trickier. Sometimes, you know, you have to go around a path to get to the next area. Like for example, this squiggle, we jumped across the head. I rarely do that. But the alternative would have been for me to like either weave in the end and then start fresh over here, which I didn't really want to do. Or I would have to go behind the stitches of these ears and then start up again then. And I think I was just basically too lazy for that. <laughs> so we ended up just jumping across the head. Um, But yeah, and, and uh, another factor is if you are going to, if it's a usable piece like a towel, like a tea towel that you're stitching on, um, you don't want the jump so big that it's going to get caught on stuff. So like right now, like this, if this is a towel, this might get caught on something. So I, I would have avoided this if I was stitching this on a towel, or I would have tried to. I know some of these areas we wouldn't have been able to as much, um, but I would have done my best to have the least amount of jumps as, as possible. Um, just because the back for a towel is exposed. Uh, we've been calling them toe catchers. <laughs> you don't want a toe catcher on the back. That was um, someone's phrase here, and I, I just like it, toe catcher. All right, um, let's get our other piece of green here. Let's let's use another scent here. Let's what's number? <laughs> this is the two dot label. Ooh, this is the evergreen smell again. Let's use that again. That was the first one that we used. There. I mean, those are all over the place, and now they're they're held together nicely. The threads. So that's one of the benefits of a conditioner. I'm going to start with uh, my needle and the needle threader. So this has, a needle threader has, or you know, this style of needle threader has a, kind of a, a metal piece here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's, we got a little metal piece, a little metal wire, and it kind of makes this kind of diamondy loop with a, a little point and goes back in. So you got this kind of hole here. Um, and it's stiff, right? I mean, it's it's not super stiff, but it's stiffer than a piece of thread, right? It's not floppy. So it makes it a whole lot easier to thread it through the needle um, because it is a little, a little um, stiffer. So I can thread it through the needle that way. You can do that pinch method really to thread it as well. Uh, but anyway, the goal is to get it threaded the, the wire threaded through um, the needle, the eye of the needle. And once you're at that point, then you can take the floss, I think we started on this side, you can take the floss and put it through that big kind of hole 
made by the wire. So now I have the floss in that, that hole. And that's easier to thread because it's, you know, a nice big wire, um, oh, nice big circle that that creates. And then at that point, I can just slide the needle back over the end and that will pull the floss through. And then I don't need the floss on the threader anymore. And there we go. We have threaded our needle. So let me just do that one more time quick. So needle threader through the needle, floss through that hole on the needle threader, and then pull the, it back through the needle. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult because that's a lot of floss going through um, the needle at once. So you might have to a little tug on it a little bit. And this one has a, like a, that little cutter on the end too, which makes it extra, extra fun. And it's just cute, a little flower on there. So I like, I like having those around. Sometimes that's just nicer and easier than, than yeah, like the pinch method that I was using earlier. All right, we have a little time left. I probably won't finish this floss, but we'll, we'll get a little bit farther. So I think I'm gonna start up here, go down to here, and then we'll be closer to finishing those stitches there. So that's my plan. Let's weave in the ends here. Oh my gosh, I went in like the same path. I rarely do that. Oh, that's funny. So when you're weaving in the ends, you want to get as different of a path as possible. And you want to like stab through all the threads that you did before. Because our goal is to like basically tie a long knot here. And then same thing back, grabbing as many threads as possible. And uh, we'll pull that through. Oh, there's that knot from earlier that I had. I know I'm getting a lot of knots today, even though I'm using the thread conditioner and that just happens sometimes. One of those days. Okay, I think I got it. And I did do that longer thread than I usually do on here, so that uh, the longer the thread you use, I, I always think the more knots you get. So I like keeping it to about 24 inches, which is about what it is now. So I did a lot more thread. I don't know what I was thinking. I had a brain freeze or something. Okay, so now this is the one where this part goes underneath the loop and this part goes over the loop. So, all right, so I gotta kind of fake it here. So. I'm gonna come up like I'm doing a back stitch. But I'm gonna first put my needle underneath that stitch so I can, you know, have have the stitch look like it's underneath, and then I'm gonna finish the stitch. There we go. So now that stitch is underneath the chain stitch. So it'll look like the flowers. Uh, back farther there behind the squiggle, whatever that squiggle is. And now this front one will go above the line. So that one we just go right on top like like we did for this other one. Oh, you just finished, uh, Gretchen says, I'm fast. I, she just finished the um, the gray. I am uh, actively trying to go a little quick on, on uh, this design just so we can try and get it done this week. And I have like, What's helping too is I have like nice lighting here and everything too, so I can see everything really well. All right, so both of these go over, over that squiggle. 
All right, now I kind of want to finish this side. So I'm going, it's 9.30, which is our usual ending time here. But I think I'm going to just finish all the green on, on this side. So I just have three more leaves and that little stem there. I think that'll be a great stopping point. So we have another single chain stitch coming up here. There, see now now my thread is closer to my normal length that I'm used to using, so it all of a sudden feels easier for me to use. When it was long, I was getting all those knots. Now it feels better. All right, single chain stitch. Get that anchor, tiny stitch on the other side. Awesome, now let's get these two chain stitches down here. And we'll back stitch up the um, middle and all the greenery on this side will be done. See that one I pulled. So here, here's the difference. So this one I pulled a little tight and this one I left really loose. So if you pull it too tight, um, then you basically just get like a fat line. You, you, you completely lose your little teardrop shape. So I'm actually going to undo that one a little. I'm just going to kind of pull the thread out a little and stop pulling a little sooner. There we go. So now I got that teardrop shape again there and now I'll tack it down. So lazy daisy stitches or single chain stitches like this, you don't want to pull super tight. You want to keep that, keep that raindrop shape. Ooh, Amy says, do you think we maybe can do a dark background project someday? For sure we can. So last year, actually about this time, we did um, those, uh, the Bride of Frankenstein's bouquet. We did that bouquet of um, dead roses, <laughs> basically dried roses. Um, we did that on, on black, and that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, it'd be definitely fun to do um, a design on black, or a dark color, or a different color at some point. Yeah, that'd be super fun. All right, last stitch of the evening. All right, so there we are. Let me weave in the end quick and then we'll take a look. So I think, um, you know, we could, we could just go ahead and I mean, not tonight anymore, but tomorrow we could just keep working on this side. We could do all the lavender on this side, the tops. And um, then before doing the other side, that'd be kind of fun. Then we could see what this side looks like finished before moving on. That'd be kind of fun. All right, get it all nice in the hoop again. All right, there we are for tonight. We made a lot of progress. So we finished this entire uh, squiggle and did all of um, this green so far. So, all right, yeah, I think tomorrow we'll finish up this little area. We'll do the purple. So uh, those are purple, uh, purple flowers. So this is supposed to be like lavender. So we'll do the little purple tops. And then we have the little monarch butterfly up here. I think we can finish all that easily um tomorrow and then maybe why don't we get these other little bugs in we can get the we have three little flies and another little monarch there we could get those done tomorrow as well um and then we just have more greenery and more purple over here man i think we're gonna totally get this done on friday i'm excited it's looking so cute all right you guys i'll uh, be sure to check out uh, be sure to check out the video I posted on TikTok as well. It's my last video where you guys, where you can see the little fox in our garden. It got the video got a little bit weird. It, it like edited the same piece a couple times, 
um, which is incorrect. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do another video to show you uh, like the longer bit of him in our yard. So I'll do that as well. But you'll get a little sense. You'll get a little peek at him um, over on my uh, my last my latest TikTok over there. And I just think it's so fun. He's so sweet. I hope he comes back and hangs out in our garden a little bit more. That'll be fun. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, thanks again for joining me this Wednesday. I will be back tomorrow uh, at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So have a great evening, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.